uh, around, we're near the bottom of the page, actually uh, two lines from the bottom, but just to quickly summarize before we, we go forward, we finished off last week with a interesting discussion where um, Rubba said, gave an, the, the question was, how can you possibly have a sale with a Goslin because the star, the, it's not worth the paper it's written on because th there's no, there's no, um, uh, there's no there there. So in other words, how can you have a, um, uh, how can you have a uh, the star? So Robert gave an interesting answer, and he said that the reliance, the reliance that the buyer has on the efforts of the Goslin to do right by him, that's the consideration that allows the transaction to go through. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's out of the box. It's not what we would normally expect to be the way one would say that's due consideration because after all, he was a Goslin and he stole a piece of property. But the, the buyer realizes that the Goslin will do everything in his power to do right by him, meaning he'll, he'll buy the property He'll buy out the property from the real owner to make it good. So he relies on that. And that reliance is what makes the sale go through. That's Rubber's theory on why that's a good transaction, why someone can buy from a Goslin, even though there's the, the property was stolen. Right. So now, th then the Gemara asks the Kasha, most of He says, wait a minute. We have a Mishnah that says, that if a person sells his Yerusha, what he's going to get in Yerusha to somebody else, or what he's going to catch fish or hunt, and he's going to have, and he sells that to somebody else, it's no sale. It's no sale. And because why? Because he doesn't have it. And Rashi explains, because how do you know you're going to get the Yerusha? Maybe the, maybe the father will sell out all the property before he dies, and there won't be a Yerusha. So there's a kasha there on rubber. So the Gemara answers that kasha by saying that, you know what? In the case of the Goslin who sells, there's real reliance. What does that mean, real reliance? He believes that that's going to be some chadata he, he relies on it. However, in the case of a, um, where, you, where you have a Yerusha or, or you're going to hunt or fish, so Rashi explains, no, there isn't total reliance. So now this whole issue centers around whether you're reliant or whether you're not reliant. Okay, that was that Gemara. Now, in, in that Mishnah, the Mishnah differentiated between someone who says, I'm going to sell a property that I'm going to get in Yerusha for my father, which is not acceptable, or which I'm going to get today for my father, Hayom, which is acceptable. And the same with with catching fish or hunting, if he says, I'm going to sell you what I'm going to hunt or fish or no, but if I'm going to sell you what I'm going to get today, Hayom, it's okay. So that's where we are now. And the Gemara is going to take off on that distinction between the word Hayom or not Hayom. Okay, so we answer that Kasha, which we'll get back to later. And, and now the Kasha, look at the, okay, two lines from the bottom. Correct, the Gemara, Omaishno, Reisho, Omaishno, Seifa. What's the chilik between the ratio where he just uses the words that I'm going to sell, that I'm selling you what I'm inheriting, or I'm, or I'm selling you what I'm going to catch, and the sefer, which says I'm selling you what I'm going to inherit today or catch today. What's the chilik? I'm Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan says sefer, in the, in the case of the sefer where we talk about the word hayom, ma irish me abba hayom, mishum covered of it. Because of the honor of his father. What does that mean? Take a look at the last Rashi on the bottom. Shem Kovid Aviv, Kishahya Aviv Gosev. His father was lying on his deathbed. The Tzorach Mors Lifuroso. And he needed the money to literally buy a burial spot for his father. And for the shrouds. Muzo Lichvod Aviv. So he is, in other words, he's motive motivated or he has a feeling because of the covet of his father. That he should not leave him in other words, that he shouldn't bury him properly or on time or whatever. So there, 
The Gomorrah makes an exception. He says, we make an exception, says the mission, that if someone is pressed, that he has to sell something today from the Yerusha because he has to bury his father, that is allowed because there the motivation will be such that he will absolutely sell it. Stamazo, you don't know. Will he, will he get a Yerusha? Will he not get a Yerusha? But here his father's lying in his deathbed and he is the son and he's going to get the Yerusha and he has to bury his father. So there's no question that he has to do what he has to do. Says the Gemara, that's okay. Also, Mashatalim Tudosi Hayom, that which I will catch from my, from my, you know, from my hunting today. So Tezayin Amit is Mishum Kidei Chayom, says Rashi, because of his Mashatalim Tudosi Hayom, that which he would, which he will catch today or fish today. Tiknu Chachomim Shedvorim Payomim, that his say that his words should be accepted. Shematzorah Kula Mizonos Dovamuot because he has no food. He has nothing to put on the table for his family. So he's clearly motivated that he must get something today. So we say that's allowed. But, but, if, he's, but if he says, I'll sell you what I will catch for the next month or the next year, that's not Mishim Kedei Chayov. So what the Gemara is telling us here is that there is a distinction between Selling something that you will get, maybe, maybe, you may or may not catch anything. You may or may not get an inheritance. But something that is about to happen today, so from today, meaning that there is a pressure from today, that's acceptable to sell even though you don't have it. So that's the chilek the Gemara is making, okay? So as to whether or not you can sell something that you don't have. Now, remember, according to Rav, when you sell the property, you sell all future rights to the property, even by the Goslin. Rav, Rav says, you're selling them all future rights. And what did the Gemara tell us before? Rav says, that's because there is reliance. In other words, the, 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 the consideration is the reliance that the buyer has that the seller will do good by him. That's the Kiddush of Rav. But when it comes to selling Yerusha or, or selling... Uh, 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 something that you don't yet have, but you're going to catch today, the Gemara makes a very fine distinction between that which you need immediately because his father was ill or because he has no food. He needs, he needs food for the table where you're allowed to sell that immediate part, not anything else. And um, so, so that, that's acceptable, but not the other. All right. So again, we're making halukim here uh, it, within within the scope of what we're discussing as to whether or not something is acceptable in the future or not. According to Rob, it's acceptable. And according to this Mishnah, it's acceptable only in very limited circumstance. Okay. Now, with that distinction, now, now we'll sort of get to, to the heart of it. Amrav Huna Amrav. Rav Huna says in the name of Rav, this is the same Rav who says what? That you that that uh, that uh, um, when you buy from a goslin, you're buying all future rights. So here's what Rav Huna says in the name of Rav. If someone says to his friend, Note the language. A field which I'm going to buy. When I buy it, it will belong to you from today. I may not buy it for a week or a month, but it'll revert back to you from, the, from this moment. Kona. He's Kona, says Rashi. When I buy it, I can no longer come back and say, no, I didn't mean it. In other words, I'm establishing today that it's yours. And, and, and when I buy it, it's yours. Says the Gemara, Kona. Now, what does kana mean? Im yikachena, if I buy it. Ve'en yochel lachzer kishalacha. If I wind up buying it, I, can, I can't come back and say, no, uh, uh, it's not yours. Notice, what happens if he never buys it? Th then then it's, a, it's a hollow pledge. He said, when I buy it, if for the rest of his life he doesn't buy a piece of property, it has no meaning. But once you pledge, you've made the pledge that it should be his. 
Okay? Now, the interesting thing here is the word imi kuchena in Rashi, if I buy it. So Rashi's interpretation, and according to all the Mepharshim, is imi kuchena, if I buy it, and yachalachzobo. But if I come back to you before I buy it and say, you know what? I changed my mind. I no longer want to give you this piece of land in the future. He's allowed to do it. So in other words, the im yikochena means if you make the pledge and never renounce the pledge, you don't renounce the pledge. It's, and, and then you go ahead and buy it a month, a year, five years later. It's okay because you made the pledge. However, if you renounce the pledge and say, you know what, I didn't buy it yet. I don't know if I will or won't, but I changed my mind. Then, according to Rashi and all the other before Shim, the Rishayim, everybody says that's acceptable. So we make a chilik here in Rav. Remember, it's Rav who says this. Rav says that when you sell it, when you sell it, then you're selling all future rights. But according to Rav, that means you've sold it. So the chilik in Rav is if you've sold it, you've sold it with all future rights. If you didn't yet sell it, but you said, in other words, you, you said, when I buy it, then it'll be yours, then it'll be, I'll sell it to you. Then, even according to Rav, says Rashi, you can back off. So that's a, an important distinction in Rav. It's only when he sells it that Rav says, now you've committed. But if you make the pledge and you don't sell it, and you say, you know what, I've decided I'm not giving it to you. And then a year later or a, or a day later, you buy something, you no longer are committed to selling it to the, or giving it to the other person. All right. So Rabbi, can I clarify one thing? Yes. You said if he sells it. I think it means if he buys it, he must sell it. But uh, if, if he, he doesn't if he buys, buy it. Exactly. If he buys it, he must give it. Sorry. Yes. If he buys it, he must give it to the fellow who he pledged to. But if he renounces the pledge and then he buys this piece of property, it does not go. Now, in Rav, what did we say in Rav? Once you sell it, even if you're a goslin and you sell it, you've now sold him all future rights. But in that case, you actually bought something from the goslin. The question is, is it a valid purchase? Because how can a goslin sell something he doesn't own? So Rav make, is mechadish. Yes, that even though the Goslin sold it to you, and in and of itself, it's not a valid transaction, but the commitment, says Rava, the commitment is that the Goslin will want you to have it. Therefore, the pledge that, in the buyer's mind that the, that, the, that, the, that the Goslin will do right by him is sufficient consideration that it's a valid sale. And that's a big Kiddush. That's a big I just want to clarify one point. It's if he buys it, he must sell it. But if he doesn't buy it, obviously he can't. It's a contingent. Uh, it's a contingent uh, purchase. Right. Yeah. right, right. The Kiddush there is that he can renounce. Before right. he buys it, he can renounce right. and say, I changed my mind. Right. Because you might think in Rob, you can't change your mind. But the only way in time you can't change your mind is if you actually made a sale, albeit uh, a weak sale or a false sale, but you made a sale. So there, Rav learned shot that even though it's a false sale, there's a commitment to make right. Therefore, the sale is a good sale. But when you never made the sale and you renounce, like you say, Michael, you're right. Okay. So that's Rick now Raman. the aura here. Rick Raman, question. Uh, question. Uh, you may have covered this already. Uh, is this inside or outside Eretz Yisrael, uh, the property? Well, it, clearly here we're talking outside because we're in Bavel. So okay. in other words, this, this discussion is in Bavel that we're, we're, uh, we're the, you know, transacted business, right? The transacted business. And um, uh, you're asking whether it would be different in Eretz as well? Well, the issue of Yovel. Oh, no, no. Oh, the Yovel issue, we've, no, we've said in the past. The Yovel issue, yes, that's a separate matter which really doesn't go into discussion. But you're right. That applies to Eretz as well. And then you write a prusible. I mean, you know, maybe there's ways around it. But um, uh, but for, for our purposes, we're not worrying about Shemitah and Yoga. We're talking about, you know, the, the transaction in and of itself, whether or not there's validity to the um, uh, to the transaction. Remember, um, uh, Halacha came 
the black letter law, as we say, the halacha came later. They, they were talking halacha lemaisa, which isn't halacha lemaisa because the Gemara isn't halacha. But when they were talking, yes, they were talking about what is, you know, how does one transact? What does one do? La halacha, you have a different issue. You have to worry about Shemitah and Yovel and, uh, you know, all kinds of other things. But, uh, right. Okay. Now, okay, now we're going to parse this very carefully. Oma Rava. Rava now wants to learn Pshat in Rav. What did Rav mean when he said, Is Rav really saying, meaning that if he commits to buying a piece of property, that 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 it, it means that he is giving it to him me'achshav? Omar Rava, mistabra milsa de Rav besodes stam. Rav's view is probably in a circumstance where Reuven said to Shimon, Shimon, um, I'm going to buy this piece of land and I'm going to, um, you're going to own it. I'm buying it. You will own it. Rava says that's when he does not refer to a specific piece of property. So Rava is now limiting his interpretation of Rav where he says, I'm going to buy you a piece of property, and that piece of property will be yours. Abel besade zu lo. But if he said to him, you know that nice piece of property at the corner of Arcola and Lamberton? I'm going to buy that piece of property for you. So now he's designated a piece of specific property. Says Rava, no, Rav would not say that in that case, it belongs to him. Why? Who says that the owner of the property at Arcola and Lamberton is going to sell it? When you say, I'm going to buy a piece of property, and we'll see what, how Rashi puts it, there are millions and millions of pieces of property. You didn't designate which property. So is there a likelihood you will buy a piece of property? Yes. When you buy a piece of property, it's going to be owned by Levy. But if you say, I'm going to buy this piece of property, how do you know that this piece of property is ultimately going to be sold to you? So it says Rashi, the sod is stam. Sod is The field that I will buy, the loy on zoo, the son chadata the makabel matana lisma cholav, sheyikach sod and yitnen Now, this goes back to some chadata. What is some chadata? Remember, we said that the reason why by the Goslin, it's a valid sale is because, says Rava, Rava's mechadesh, because the buyer is so mechdas, he relies on the fact that the Goslin will do good by him. So when does smicha sadas, when does reliance help, says Rashi, when you say, I'll, I'm going to buy a piece of property and sell it to you, then the, the, the friend says, okay, I'm saying mechdas. I know you will buy, you're a rich guy, you're going to buy a piece of property and you're going to sell it to me. Or you're going to give it to me. Then smichas das works because it's 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 very practical for the guy to say, "I rely on you. You're going to buy a piece of property. There are millions and millions of properties uh, in, in the world, or or certainly in Maryland. I'm going to rely on you that you're going to buy a piece of property and give it to me. So that's pshat the sodis stam. So mekabel the some chadat and the mekabel matana lisma chalav she yikach sod of yitnenelo she harvest sodis mitzuyos likach. There are many fields to be bought. If he says this particular property at our colon in Lamberton, he's not reliant. So this is now Akasha and Rav, right? So Rav is asking Akasha and Rav. Rav that you just said, that that's not in every case, because, because remember, Rava is the one who says, Smichas Das is a valid form of Kenyan. The fact that I rely that he's going to do it, now I can be kind of the property. Now I feel good about the property. But that's only good when you make a general statement about property. When you make a specific statement about property, 
how can the guy rely that you're going to buy that property? Maybe the seller doesn't want to sell. That's that's a he's that, that's a um, historic property, his parents' property from generations. He's not going to sell it to you. How can you, the buyer, rely that the Sade Zoo is going to come to you? That's the kasha. And with this kasha, he's he's really arguing on Rav because Rav is the one who said when you sell when you sell. Um, when a goslin sells you the property, you can rely. How does he, how do you know the goslin is going to be able to buy it from the from the original owner? The original owner may may never sell it to the goslin because we're talking about a specific piece of property, and that specific piece of property may never be sold. So how could you rely on it? That's the cash. But, but Rabbi, it's contingent in either way. One is more likely to happen than the other. But what's the difference? In either case, it's contingent, so it may have a much lower probability under a specific piece of property, but, but the, you know, the terms are the same. It's if, and then, and so therefore, you know, it's just a matter of what the probability is. Why would that matter? Good, good, good question. The answer is because the recipient in his mind is so mechdas. You're right. Everything is probabilities. One is, one is 50, 50 at best. One is 99.9. .9. Why? Because there are thousands or millions of pieces of property. And when you make a general statement, I will buy a piece of property. If you say to me, you know what, Sophia, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to buy a piece of property and, and, and make you a gift of it or sell it to you for under market or whatever. I feel pretty good about that because I know that you're capable of buying property, all kinds of property, and you're going to find a property. So I go home at night. I tell my wife, you know what? Michael has pledged a piece of property to me. I feel pretty good. I'm going to get a piece of property because you're right. Maybe there is a scintilla of possibility that there will be no property that you will ever buy. But can I rely on it? Sure, I can rely on it. I can rely on it. But when you're telling me I'm going to buy you that piece of property at Arcola and Laverton, I don't go home and say, boy, I now have a piece of property. I, I think to myself, it's very nice that he's going to buy it, but who knows that he's ever going to get it? Maybe there's some reason why that property will never be sold. So the probabilities are there, you're right, but it's smichas das. It's not about the probabilities. It's about the reliance of the, of the recipient, of the buyer, of the recipient. What how much can he rely? When Rava says, remember what we said, Rava gave us a tremendous chiddish that when, when a person feels good that a, the, about the goslin going out of his way to find the owner, make a deal with the owner, that's a feel good. And that feel good is consideration. That's enough consideration that, that, that he should say, yes, he's going to find me that piece of, buy me this piece of property because he's going out of his way. Look at all the things he's doing for it. So you're right. Probabilities aside, there's always a possibility, however low, that no property will ever come to me. But isn't it likely, much more likely than not, that you will find a piece of property to, to, to buy as opposed to this piece of property? That's the Gemara. Well, the thing is, it's it's neither is certitude. Correct. Um, Correct. And um, the thing, so I don't understand, is it a Montana or is he selling it to him? No, so, he, yeah, no he's selling. He's selling. It's not okay. a Montana. So, so a lot of it, I'll sell it to you. It depends on the terms. I mean, they haven't agreed upon the terms. No, no, no. What it's no, going to the, cost. They, they've agreed on everything, except there's no property yet. There's no property yet, but they've agreed that when I buy it, I will sell it to you and you will own it as of today. But wait a minute. It's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll agree to you to sell a property to you at this price, but it depends on the property as to the value. So, you know, it, they couldn't agree on a price that, you know, because different properties have different values. No, no. So, so, so okay. So let's, the, the terms here are that Ruben says to Shimon, you know what? I'm going to buy a piece of property uh, and I'm going to sell it to you for $10,000. For $10,000. Reuven is now going to scout out in the in in, in Maryland, in, in in New York, in Kentucky, wherever okay. it is. He's going to find a piece of property for $10,000 and he's going to sell it to Shimon. And Shimon says, you know what? I feel good about that because the, you will find a piece of property for $10,000 and I will buy it from you. Yes. Is it 100% certain to? No. Not a hundred percent certain to, but he's soymech. This is about reliance. Can I rely on you? 
you're a businessman, you have the means, you can buy a piece of property wherever it may be in this country or maybe in Eretz Royal, you will find a piece of property and you will sell it to me for 10,000. I sleep at night knowing that will happen. I mean, you can always argue and say, yes, but the probability, even a small probability, but this isn't about probabilities. It's about the reliance of the prospective purchaser. Is it going to happen? Well, we're talking about a goslin. I mean, no, so. no, 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 no. In, in this case, when Marav, the, the, the case that he just brought up now, we're not talking about a Goslin. The, the Goslin case is one case. Rav Huna says in the name of Rav, if Reuben says to Shimon, I'm going to buy a piece, this is not a Goslin. This is a straight case of where a guy says to his friend, I'm going to find a piece of property and I'm going to sell it to you. And when I sell it to you, you will have owned it from the day, from today. Uh, and, but I'm going to buy it for you. So he goes home and says, wow, uh, you know, I, this fellow really knows what he's doing. I'm relying on the fact that he's going to get it to me. Says I still, say, I, I still say that, you know, the probability is higher, but it's not certitude. So I how can the opinion be that it's it's going to happen? You can place reliance on it. Because look at Rob Sheeta. Rob says that when a goslin, when a goslin sells uh, uh, his friend a piece of property, the, then he's selling them all future rights. What do you mean future rights? He stole this piece of property. What future rights does he have in a piece of property that he sold? Says Rob, because this goslin may go ahead and buy out, like we said last week, he'll buy out the property legitimately from the owner. Therefore, those future rights go along to the buyer and He's going to rely on those future rights. That's how Robert interprets Rob. That Rob, it's it's a strain. I, I grant you, but but Rob makes that determination. Now, why he says it, we're going to get to the punchline finally today. We've talked about this for several weeks. I promised you a punchline. The punchline is coming in the next few lines. But 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 Rob is of the opinion that when a person transacts, he's righteous, even though he stole the land. So he's not such a tzaddik. But when he sold it to the guy, he really meant to sell it legitimately. Ah, he stole it, but he'll make good. So you're you're into black and white, Michael, and you say, but these are all possibilities and probabilities and it may happen, it may not happen. And you're right. But the Gemara is not dealing now in probabilities. The Gemara is dealing in what's something that's called smichas das. Smichas das is, is more ethereal than, than black and white probabilities. Smichas das means, does someone rely and believe that someone else will do good by him? Now, that's not a black and white, uh, a black and white uh, statement. Probabilities are black and white. I agree with you, 90%, 99%. But smichas das is the likelihood that someone believes that someone will do good by him. And Rava, incredibly, says that that's a valid form of Kenyan. Rava came along and told us last week that smichas das, the fact that Shimon believes that Reuven will go out of his way to do good by him, allows him to become the owner of the property, even though it's a stolen piece of property and you can't sell something that's stolen, it's not yours. The Terence is because you see the guy is sweating bullets to buy it for you, you believe in him. Okay, I know, Michael, it's, it's, it's something you have to take a little bit of a leap of faith, and you'll see in a minute why that leap of faith is what Rob holds. But So let's just say, but now we made a distinction. Rob says, wait a minute. Rabbi Grauman? Yeah. To continue, uh, you're relying on Ruve. Shimon's relying on Ruvain. Yes. What happens if the property Ruvain buys is not a property that Shimon's willing to purchase? No, but we're talking about the property that he sold him. You're right. It's not. It's an be a unknown property. property. You don't know. So how no, does no, no. how does Ruvain approve buy? Uh, how are we assured that Ruvain's going to buy a property that is acceptable to Shimon? Okay. So the so, okay. So let me back up. The case of the stolen property is not a random piece of property. Ruvain comes to Shimon and you see, you see this nice piece of property here at the corner of our coal and Lambeth, and I'm selling it to you. And 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 Shimon says, "Wow, I like that property. I'm buying it. The specific piece of property." Turns but out, here, but that here Ruben, we're talking that, about an, a non-specified piece of property. No, no, you're, you're mixing two cases. The first case that we talked about in the past had to do with a stolen specific piece of property that we've been talking about now 
Um, uh, and so you didn't hear that part. So when, when he sold him a stolen piece of property to which he doesn't have title, Rob says that the that Shimon can buy that property and he's going to rely on Ruvain to buy it from the real owner. What we just said this morning on Tez Zion on the base on the top is not stolen property. It's, it's a piece of property that Ruvain says to Shimon, I'm going to buy a piece of property for ten thousand dollars. Are you are you are you agreed? Agreed. In other words, Shimon is agreeing. He doesn't care if the property is in Maryland or in, in, in Kentucky or South Carolina. He wants to own a piece of property, a random piece of property, and 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 he's relying so on every. Using... So every and any piece of property would be acceptable to Shimon. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Rabbi, okay. excuse me, Rabbi. Is, this sounds like, first of all, one of them is a good property buyer. He's in the business, yes, and he's trustworthy. And he buys, he buys property at good he's, value, correct? He's, he's buying. He makes good deals. He has a reputation for that. And along comes this situation, and he says, "Fine, I trust them. I don't care where it is because right. it's only an investment. I'm not going to that, farm it. I'm not going to do anything else other than an investment that should that's grow." Correct. That's correct. And, and that's the background of this story here. And, and, that, like. and that's Pshat Sodet Stam. Sodet Stam means a, 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 a piece of property. Somewhere, it doesn't matter. Somewhere. Right. So, so, so that's what Rob is saying. But when he says Sodet Zoo, Sodet Zoo, this property, that's different. then it's a whole different story. Because Sodet Zoo, you have no guarantee. So, 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 so this is the cash of Rob is asking. Rob is saying, you, Rob, said that if you stole a specific piece of property and sold it to Shimon, Shimon is the owner. Ah, it's stolen, but Shimon is going to rely on Ruben that Ruben will buy it from the original owner and sell it to him. This specific piece of property. But Rob is coming now and saying, wait a minute, that can't be. You can't say that, that, that Rob will say that if, 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 if I say to you, I'm going to buy this piece of property and sell it to you. From now, it's going to be yours. Says Rava, no, Rav doesn't agree to that. So he is now, Rava is making a distinction in Rav between Sodestam and Sodezu. And by making that decision, he's asking Akasha, how can Rava, how can Rav say, which we said in the previous doubt, that if, if he steals this particular piece of property and sells it to Shimon, that it's just, he's selling him a valid piece of property. That's Sadezu. Sadezu, you can't sell Sadezu. You don't know you're going to buy it. You don't know you're going to get it. You know you will get a piece of property. You don't know you're going to get this piece of property. So, so that's the that's the Kasha here. So he, Rob is asking Kasha and Rob, how can you say that by Goslin? It's acceptable. There's a chilik between Sadezstam and Sadezu. That's the Kasha. Now, so the Gemara says, and this is a this is a, a statement that you rarely, if ever, see in the Gemara. The Gemara says, "For Elohim, my God, this is Rav talking now." He says, "My God, Omar Rav, I feel it even by Sadezu." In other words, Rav is saying, "You you are learning shot me that I make a chilik between Stam and Zu. That's not correct." I, I say my shot says Rob, even by Zoo. So he, he's pronouncing it with my God. I mean, the, where do you come, Robert, to make that distinction? That's not a valid distinction. Okay, so what does he say? Omar Rab, the Soda Zoo, Mechdi, Rob. So now Rob is saying that, that when he sells him, uh, when he says, when I buy it, this piece of property at Arcola and Lamberton, I'm going to sell it. It's going to be yours. I'm going to sell it to you. And it's a valid sale. How could that be, says Rava? So now, now we're going to get to the bottom of the whole mystery. Mechdi Rav Kaman, Omra, the Shmeitzer. Who is Rav relying on that he's able to make this statement? Kurab Meir. He relies on Rav Meir, the famous Rav Meir who says, Oda Makna Dover Shalobol Oilam. This is a critical statement. Rav Meir says a person can sell 
something that is not yet in the world. Something that is not yet in the world. It's a future item. You may sell it. And that's what we've been talking about here, right? What did we say in the case of where, where a person wants to sell his, his Yerusha? The, as Rashi said, how can you sell a Yerusha? Who knows you're going to get a Yerusha, right? So I said uh, uh, last week that there's a major machlekes that Rav, the halacha is like Rav because, he's, because he was the gadol, but all the other chachamim don't hold like Rav. They hold against Rav. So, so what's pshat? Everybody holds against Rav, but Rav says. So Rav says, no, no, I'm not a lightweight. I'm holding like Rav Meir. And Rav Meir's shita is that that a person can sell something which is not yet in the world. So Rashi says, Rav is making, he's swearing. Rav is the Mehdi Rav Kaman Amal Lishmait Sekarab Meir. So Rav can say this because he holds of the Shita, the famous Machlaikis, Dabar Shalai Bal Ailam. Can you sell something that um, is not yet created? I see, Jay, you're, you're talking about the futures market. Right. So, so the question is something that is yet to be Nyland, that is yet to be born, the yet to come, or something that is born but not in your sphere in other words it could be out there somewhere but you don't know about it so all of a sudden you have to go out and find it that's a double so now now things become clearer if rav holds that mark the other the person can can buy transact double so when the goslin sells reuven the goslin sells the property to shimon so what, what, what does Rob say? He sells him the property and everything that comes in the future. What future? There's no future. He stole a piece of property. Teret says, you can sell. So he now can go and make it his life's mission to buy that property from Levi. Right? And Rava, and Rava is Machadish that Shimon can rely on him that he's going to buy that property. What do you mean? You're relying on a goslin that is going to buy a piece of property? What happens if the guy says, I'll never sell it to you for the, you know, if my life depended on it? it says, Rob, it doesn't matter. So this is an incredible thing that Rob Mayer is saying, and Rob is relying. Now, let's go even further. You know what? This Makta Dabr Shalabola the Tanya we learned in Abraisa, listen to this. If a, if a man says to a woman, you will be married to me, I'm non-Jewish, but I'm going to be Megayer, and when I'm Megayer, you're going to be married to me. Or, I'm going to marry you after you're Megayer. You're not Jewish, I am, but you're going to be married to me after you uh, uh, become a Gair. Is there any guarantee that you'll become a Gair? Of course not. But the, the Kedushin is valid. Weiter. A, a, a slave cannot marry. But he says, once I become free, I'll marry you. Or after you become free. Same thing. Freedom is not something in his hand. The Baal, the, the owner, is the one who controls his freedom. But yet he says, I'll marry you. And the Kedushin is Chal. The Kedushin is Chal if he says something which is Dabr Bola Olam. It never came into the world. It may never come into the world. He never be free, or he'll never convert. Yet the Brisa says it's a valid marriage. You're an Ashes Ish. You're a married woman, but you're going to be married to me when, when your husband dies. <laughs> your husband dies. Who says he's going to die? Okay. So in other words, these are all things that are impossible to determine. What happens if you die childless? There is a mitzvah of yibum, right? The 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 uh, the brother, the brother-in-law has to marry. Maybe maybe the, the yibum will want to marry you. So so in other words, he, so again, he's pledging something that, that is not necessarily possible. Inviter, uh, What happens if? Okay, I can't marry your sister. As long as you're alive, if if I'm married to you and I divorce you, I'm not allowed to marry your sister. Is the halacha? But if you die, I can marry your sister. I can marry your sister only if you die. So he makes all these pledges, 
So the the Brisa says Einu Mukudeshes. The Brisa says that the Roiv Chachamim say means nothing. Einu Mukudeshes. Rav Meir Omar Mukudeshes. Rav Meir says Mukudeshes. How how can you say Mukudeshes? Why? Because Rav Meir says that what other Makna Davishalobala Olam, you are allowed to transact with something that has not yet happened. So Rav Meir says, if a man makes this pledge, I'm going to marry you if your husband dies or if you're a guy or whatever, it's okay. Clearly today, there's no Kedushin. But if the husband dies or she becomes Jewish or she becomes free, then there's Kedushin. So now you have the suspended Kedushin. Yeah. Yeah, excuse me, Rabbi? Yeah. Uh, what happens if there's some deposit, some money goes into this transaction for something that's not here yet well you know so, so, so what happens to that deposit so so, so, so it's a good question according to the chachamim it, it's 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 meaningless it's meaningless and according to rab mayor you don't even need a deposit because according to rab mayor at the time that it happens he will give her kedushin in other words he'll give her kesef or whatever right at the time of the condition so the case of today doesn't change it the consideration today doesn't change anybody's mind not rabeir and not the chachamin it, it's a question of did he say something so ridiculous that it, it can't stick yeah. so according to most of the chachamin right the majority of the chachamin no olam, you can't do anything with it rab Meir is the is, and rab Meir is, is a giant and rab Meir comes along and says a person can be makna olam. If I can be makna olam, olam, then I can sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. I don't own it, but I may. So you're right. I mean, so you understand how far Rav Meir is taking his issue, and now you understand that Rav is relying on Rav Meir's chiddush to say that if a gazlan sells you the property. You can become the owner of the property, even though he's a Goslin and he doesn't own it, because of the reliance. The samchadata. I know Michael. That's a tough, tough act, but it's the smichas das <laughs> that he believes that the Goslin is going to do everything in his power, and he will succeed. It's like, uh, you know, seeing is believing. Believing is seeing. In other words, I believe so much that I see it. I see it. I believe. I see it, it's going to become mine because I believe it. It's not necessarily black and white, but I believe it. And Smichas Das is believing. That's the pshat. So Rabbi, I Rabbi, uh, I question, if, uh, if, you're, if you're a slave, you can't marry. So you can say that, uh, you know, once I'm free from slavery, then I will marry. Okay, that's fine. fine. But what if you're, uh, what if you're a goy and you are married? You already, uh, but when you made that pledge, you says, "I'll marry you once I convert." But between that time, you get married and then you convert. Can you do that? Well, you see, you right. So, so you're, you're touching on two different issues. Let me just say. So, um, first of all, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say two things that are contradictory. You can divorce the, 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 the first wife, right? You can divorce her and go. A person who marries, a, a non Jew who marries, there's no Kedushin. Kedushin isn't Chal. So when a person converts, he's Kekot and Shinola dummy. That marriage by no longer exists. Terms, it's not That's a what marriage. I'm ask. It's not a marriage. And he's married civilly, but there's no Kedushin. So when he converts, he is now a new person, right? He right. now can marry someone with Kedushin. Ah, what do you do with the first wife? Well, I mean, you should divorce her. I'll be, uh, I'll be civil, uh, you know, uh, on, on, under our law. But it's, it's not Chal. Kedushin isn't Chal. So there's no issue there. Yeah. Jay? But I was, was going to say, but we hold also to, you say that like a Katan dummy, that, that, that uh, when they convert, it's, it's right. like their new, new right. birth. So how do you hold him to, to, to any marriage at that point also? Because right. he's, he's got no status anymore. His status has completely changed. His status is... It, that's an interesting question. Question. How, do, right. no, how does what he said before matter? How, can, be how, exactly. that, how can you hold him to it? Exactly. That's, that's, he's, that's he's, that's that, he, he doesn't, he, this person now didn't exist, you know, before right. he converted. Right. So, so, so the distinction there, it's a good question, but the distinction there is that 
he's a cotton for halacha. He's a cotton in 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 Jewish matters. In other words, he's but not, monet- but, but not monetary is what you're saying. Also. Right. So he made a statement. He made a statement. And that statement, it's a double shalom bala olam because he's not Jewish. Says Rav Meir, it doesn't matter. He made the statement. He, 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 he's 13 in a day. He made the statement. We hold him by the statement, but we can't apply the halacha because he's not Jewish. Once he converts or she converts, then the statement becomes reality. Even though the statement was made when he was a non-Jew, it doesn't matter because the statement doesn't go away. It's just the statement can't be chal. It can't apply. Once it can apply, the statement sticks. So your, your question is a good one, but it's not the same. In other words, we don't wipe him out for everything in the world. You say he's a cotton for everything in the world. He's a cotton for halacha. For halacha, he's a cotton. Whatever happened before in his life, halachically has no value can, because nothing ever... Can a cotton make a vow? And uh, it be retro, I mean, it, it be valid once he turns 13 in a day? It, it, a cotton himself, if, if he was a Jewish cotton, then his vow is not a valid vow. I give you, I grant you. But, but the, the, what, the, what he said before, what he said before is applicable once he, uh, once he becomes Jewish. Now, remember, this is Rav Meir. Everybody else says no for all the reasons that you're saying, all the good reasons that you're saying. He's a cotton, he's new, it never happened, whatever. All valid. But Mayer says no. The fact that he said it and the fact that it's a future consideration and it comes true, we go back to when he said it and he said he said it and it has validity. That's a tremendous chiddish. It's Rav Mayer who we have to be astounded by and say, and if it wasn't Rav Meir, we would say, you must be kidding, right? But it's Rav Meir. So Rav Meir says, that you're allowed to transact in things that, have, that don't have any traction yet. And that's where Rav takes his view that you can buy from a goslin, even though it doesn't have traction, because a goslin can't sell you anything. But all of a sudden, you can, because you believe he's going to do right by you. So that belief is the consideration that allows that transaction. It's all very out there. I'm going to tell you that, you know, in order to understand this, you have to take a leap of faith. But if Rav Meir said it, you know, it's not, Rav Meir is not a lightweight. So he's machadish, something that we have to take into consideration. Halacha is another question. Is, it, is he right halachically? Can you do that? Can you not do it? That, for that, we're going to rely on the halacha. But let's so talk about so, Rabbi, how is that adjudicated and based in today? Because you said that the halacha is according to Rav. So, um, but the majority of poskim are against this. So, in in based in when these issues come up today, today, how is today in Bezdin, today in Bezdin, the Bezdin will take a much more practical view of this and say that um, uh, that. Uh, transacting is something that is not, that has no kiyum, you can't transact. In other words, the halacha will be like the rabbi. The halacha will be like the chachamim, not like the mayor. But at the time of the Gemara, they had great difficulty because the mayor was, the mayor and Rav were the Gedolim. So if they said it, it, it's not a light matter. Now, we're dealing in practicalities today. So in, 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 as a practical matter in halacha, it's very difficult to transact things that don't exist, right? So, so there, the halacha would have to make some kind of a compromise as to whether it works. Clearly, in the case of Kedushin, you cannot be Makadi someone who is in the future going to become a gear. You, you can't do it. it. It doesn't exist. But there are contingent sales today, and that, so that's right. different than uh, right. Kedushin. So, so contingent sales, depending on the contingency, some will be acceptable, some will not. Right. Right. You, you remember that there's, there, there's, there's the famous cases in war where someone says, you'll be divorced if I die. If I don't come back from battle, you're divorced. Okay, so the, the, the question of halacha, is it a divorce? I'll marry you if I come back from, from war. And then she marries somebody else. Is she an ace of each? Because he, he made a condition, contingent on him coming back from war. She didn't come back from war. He married somebody else. What happened? So as a halacha is practical. Allah is fine to try to practical answer, 
So in some cases, there will be a future consideration. In some cases, there won't. But you can see from this machlokes where that stems from, because Romero is the one who said that you can, you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, build a mountain on the head of a pin. I mean, you can take something that is not likely and make it and make it likely. So that's the machlokes here. So, so now we understand going back what Rob was talking about. The other and 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 so let's finish this just to say. Now a so the uh, Amra Now a woman marrying is she's not sadez stam. Remember we have the machlokes between sadez stam and sadez What did we say? Sadez stam, you can make a transaction. Sadez how do you know that he's going to sell the the, uh, the the land? So the Gemara says that if marrying a woman is like Sadezu, right? Because it's this particular land. How do you know it's going to happen? Ba'omer, Rav Meir, Mukudeshes, and Rav Meir says Mukudeshes, so therefore Rav Meir holds that Sadezu, Sadezu, you can actually transact. Therefore, when Rav wanted to make a distinction in Rav between Sadezstam and Sadezu, Teret says no. Rav holds his view even, remember he said to Elohim, what are you talking about? My 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 shita says Rav is even beside the zoo. Why? Because he relies on Rav Meir. Because Rav Meir says that a woman marrying a woman is like Sada zoo. It's like this particular property. How can you right? It's not Sada Stam. And yet uh, uh, Rav Meir says Mukudeshes. So Rav says, therefore, it, it, it's a valid it's a valid sale even with Sada zoo. So let's take a look at Rashi. Bahaisha Kasada zoo Danya. The yesh be'elu she'en biyado lahavi atzmo l'klal kedushin, right? Ka'ashe ain biyaze l'chotis bala sadeh, because there is possibilities of where this woman will never come into kedushin, like a gay or all these other things, just like a person may not sell this field to him, right? So l'vach halo, the evet v'shivcha ain biyado l'shachre, and evet v'shivcha, it's not in their own control. The ain biyad isha l'hamis is bala, and it's not in a woman's control that her husband will die, or a chosa, or her or sister will die. Well, Rav Meir, and Rav Meir says, with the shiyava, the klal kedushin, the kudesh is here mafreya, le mafreya. If, if, in other words, listen to this: not just kedushin is chal at the time of the gerus or the time of the shikur, it's chal from the moment he said it. He said it a year before. A year before he said that what when you convert, I'll marry you. And then nothing happened. A year later, she converted. They're married. They're not married from the moment she converted. The moment from the moment they're married from the moment that he said it a year earlier. That's even that's even a bigger chiddush. It's one thing to say we're married, but married when I said it when it was a davar shalobala olam. Teret says that davar shalobala olam. You can sell or you can transact or you can commit to a davar shalobala olam. So granted, this is an extreme view in our minds because we're we're all practical thinking people. So we think, you know, uh, you know, uh, you're dealing, but but yet you see, you see, and, and you're right. When you sell something that doesn't yet exist, I mean, uh, Jay said before about the futures, right? So what is the futures? Futures is tariffs is a shadow shalabola olo, right? So you're selling. Um, the crop that is going to be born and uh, that's going to come in next uh, winter's harvest, I'm selling that today. What do you mean you're selling that today? You don't know that it's going to come. You're right. So you're, you're, you're betting. You're making a risk. You're betting. Now, when you do it on, 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 on something that is purely monetary, okay. But here you're dealing with double ship and Kedusha. Now, now uh, the question will come and all of you will ask it. What happens if by the time this woman uh, converts, uh, she takes a proper, she's proposed by somebody else and she marries somebody else. Is she an Aces Ish? Well, according to her mayor, she's an Aces Ish. She got married a year ago. She got married a year ago by the guy who said, you're going to be my wife when you, when you, uh, Maguire. Now you can see how serious the situation could potentially be is that she's already married a year ago, even though she wasn't even Jewish. Now, and she, might, and she might have committed adultery during that year. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, if she's a if she's a goya and commits adultery, it's not adultery. In other words, if she was with it, with someone else during the year that she was not converted, that's not an issue. The issue. Uh, she, but if she's married to him a year ago, it means she was Jewish a year ago. No, no. Retroactively. It retroactively. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're asking retroactively she committed adultery during the year, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, the, the, whole, the, whole, the whole thing about Smichas Das uh, becomes much more plausible if instead of the scenario starting with Ruvain approaching Shimon, I'm going to buy a property and it's going to be sold to you. Shimon approaches Ruvain, who's a wheeler dealer and a rainmaker, and asks him to get him a property. Then it becomes more plausible that he's relying on him, whether he's asking him to get a specific property or any property right. of $10,000 value. Right, right. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Right. So it becomes more plausible to say Smichas Das. Exactly. So, but you see, you see, you, you see the nuances here. But now, once we understand that we're relying on something called Makna Adam Damshla Bola Olam, it becomes clear whether or not you accept the principle. I mean, Rameir's principle was not accepted by the by the Rove, but but yet, if you accept the principle, then you can build all kinds of of, of cases, like Rav does. Which may you can say, well, it strains the imagination. How do you do it? Whatever the terrace is, the terrace is that um, that uh, you're allowed to foresee into the future. Menashe <laughs> said, "Okay, you created the time machine, right? In essence, you may have created a time machine that allows you to do something in the future um, without net necessarily uh, committing to it. But uh, that's that's the reality. It's a tremendous reality." And, um, and, that, and now, according to this, so, the, so now the, the, the cash, when we go back and we look at the question of, um, uh, of, a, of a person selling, a person selling his Yerusha, right? So who says he's going to have a Yerusha? So Chaira, according to Rav Meir, who says, Makna Adam, I mean, it, it's, it's Bola Olam, but not to him. In other words, the Yerusha is there. It may not be his Yerusha, but the, the property is there. So uh, according to Rav Meir, according to Rav Meir, and then according to Rav, what do you do? What do you, what do, you do um, in this particular uh, situation with this pricer? So again, it, it, it raises all kinds of fascinating questions, um, but for us to understand that there is such a shita, and that's what I was, this is the punchline to the last few weeks, is that that Rav can go on a limb and say what he says because he relies on this svar. Now, this is is in many places in the Gemara. Those of you who learned Dafyomi or other things know that this is a this is a svara that applies in many different situations. It's not just in this particular case. So you have to rely on the fact that in order to allow uh, circumstances to happen. So again, uh, but in this particular case, we understand so. Rava's distinction is not a valid distinction in Rav. I mean, Rava wants to make that distinction, but it's, Rav says, no, don't make that distinction in me because I believe, I believe that even Sadezu is your kaina. Ah, Sadezu, how do you know? Teretz is Smichas Das. All right? So that's, that's, that's how the whole thing comes together. So, Mitchell, next week, we're going b- back to our original Mishnah and we're going to talk about other things, but I think we've neatly wrapped up this whole sugya by 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 bringing in Rav Meir and that shita. So now everything agreed or not agreed, halacha or not halacha, we understand the principle, and therefore Rav can can do the extreme. Now it's amazing at the time that 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 uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm reminded of something Rav Moshe, the friend of the made a psak halacha that the whole world was really up in arms about uh, 25, 30 years ago. And, and everybody said, how could he, how could he paskin like this? But he paskin leniency with regard to, um, to um, uh, artificial insemination, other issues having to do with the issues of that kind of thing. And uh, the, the Torah world was kind of up in arms. Uh, how does he do that? Again, Rav Moshe was Rav Moshe, so he took it upon himself. So if you want to understand what happened 2,000 years ago, just look back 25 years ago, and 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 Rav Meisha was the Rav Meir, and 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 many of the other Gedolim didn't hold like Rav Meisha, but yet Rav Meisha was the Gadol, and and people followed Rav Meisha, people followed Rav Meisha. He, he was lenient, but he followed Rav Meisha. So now understanding that, we understand that you know 2,000 years ago in the time of the Gemara, you know. Rav Meir may have been unpopular, but he was nevertheless the Gadol, and, and, and he made a proclamation that other people couldn't necessarily accept, they couldn't wrap their heads around it, but it was a halacha. I mean, again, 
Ain't Dovah Chodesh Takas Hashem. In other words, what we're seeing today happened before and happened before, right? Moshe Rabbeinu made, gave Psak, and we see in the Torah that uh, that the Torah that the Klal Yisrael misowned him. What do you mean you misowned him? Moshe Rabbeinu is the God of Lador. Doesn't matter. God of Lador yesterday. Today he's not the God of Lador anymore. Today I need to drink water. I don't have water. That's human nature. But to understand halacha, there's a certain different sway in halacha. And, and this is what learning the Gemara helps us understand. Forget about Allah Chalamaisa. It helps us understand different sheetas. And sometimes, you know, we, have, we really have to take a step back and say, you know what? We'll accept everyone. And, and Eliyahu Navi will give us the terrors. The Rabbi Shalom will ultimately tell us who's right, right? Shilom and Shammai, the mayor of Yehuda, Rav and Shmuel. But, but it's fascinating when you learn the Gemara to understand the depths of it, how, how different Yudayim can accept different viewpoints that are diametrically opposed. And Michael, you have a, tr- a tough time understanding something, which in essence, I, I understand you have a tough time understanding it, right? But, but when, when you introduce something as, as ethereal or as ephemeral as Smichas Das, Smichas Das trumps reality. The reality says that, that it's 99.999, but there's a, there's a scintilla of doubt. Comes Smichas Das and says, I have no doubt. Okay. <laughs> All right, but but to put Michael at ease and everybody else, when Shmuel disagreed with Rav on commercial transactions, the halacha went with Shmuel. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and by the way, the next sugi is Omar Shmuel. So now we're going to get to Shmuel, and we're going to get and Shmuel was Rav's Chalmid. So so Shmuel really uh, was. I mean, he, he revered his Rebbe, right? But there were times when he didn't agree with him, but he revered him. Anyway, it's a fascinating discussion. And uh, I'm glad that everyone is in, is in, invested because this is really what the Gemara is about. It's 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 understanding and shakla vitaria means asking questions and probing. And uh, Baruch Hashem, that's that's what we're doing. So um, everyone should have a wonderful week. Stay safe. And Mr. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. 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 Thank you.